Hello and welcome to Blitz Album Party 8. I know, right? I've already had 8 of these. Well, we've had 7 of these. This is number 8. And we're listening to Dilate by, by Vessels tonight. And we're going to have some fun. Play some Blitz. Talk about the episode 18, which is here. Episode 18, which is uh, live on all your good and bad podcast aggregators and yeah it's available for you guys to listen hopefully we'll get a challenger soon if we don't then i might have to play some blitz myself let's play a bit of uh let's play a bit of bullet to begin with why not something a bit different for our thursday evening let's play some two one while we wait for some challenges to suggest themselves. Okay. Okay, so what am I doing here? This is a strange kind of opening, but sure it's absolutely fine for both sides. White has enormous control over the d5 square, so therefore black has to play a bit more, uh, bit more adventurously than they otherwise might to try to uh, make some things happen. And that's why I'm going to try and load the gun here on the dark squares. And if white is just going to give me the d4 square, then I suppose I should try to take it, but maybe that's not going to be so easy to achieve. I mean, my knight's a good piece on c5, but equally, d6 isn't looking too clever, is it? We might have to give away a pawn here just to get some play, just to get some space back. That's what we're going to do. And then I've got a choice here. I could play. Nah, I don't think I've got a choice actually. I think we're going to have to play this. And then I suppose we try to throw our knight into f3 via some way. Don't know how. Ah, we've got some play here. That knight on b5 is slightly offside. Okay. Um, probably not a bad idea to take some squares away from this knight. D6 looked like a quite a nice one for it. I don't know, is this, so, is this so scary? I've got lots of activity for the pawn. So much. I definitely don't have to uh, take that queen just yet because I've got the knight fork if necessary. Please uh, queue up the challenges and I'll be doing things for the next hour. try to make the challenges casual that would be even better it means we don't get any issues with flagging and any of that kind of nastiness this makes for a much more fun stream if no one's worrying too much about the game itself So made a bit of a mess of this I think they were doing perfectly well I feel like I have some chances now to make something happen but how 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 alright we'll take it now and then rook takes followed by what rook d2 
because I want to threaten knight h3, which is letting me play. I have that. We're threatening the rook knight on e3 as well as the rook on g4. Knight f1 looks a bit tasty, but maybe this is good. What's the material like? We're dead even, but that my rook is just so much better. It's probably objectively just a draw, but I think black has the enough of initiative to do things here, maybe. White well, can get this past B pawn, but my king is on the right side to start doing things over this way. So I suppose we should try. Uh, it should just be a draw with king against uh, pawn, king and pawn against rook. I think, or oh, we just have a repetition immediately here. Don't really mind. Oh no, okay, I thought. Hoping that there's no way of forcing my king backwards at any point. My rook. This seems okay. Yeah, right, we'll just take the win on time. But Right, come on, give me some challenges here. Guys, I can see there's a few of you viewing. As we listen to Elliptic by Vessels. So, episode 18 out today contains lots of things. Um, we talk about the first women's chess club. We talk about horse racing. Well, well show jumping, I think, was the main one. Um, what came first, show jumping or chess? With relation to the way that knights move, which was very strange way of uh, doing things. Aha, we have a challenge. Lovely. Let's make this out. Oh, where's he gone? No, no more challenges. Okay. Um, we have... What else do we have on the podcast? Rules came back this week with a, with a vengeance. And we also have uh, Chris Story talked about, as I said, the first women's chess club, as well as oh something else. Uh, we talked about oh yeah, a guy called um, Gunter Murring, who I hadn't heard of before, but he appears twice in Tim Crabbe's list of the 110 greatest moves ever. And wanted to find out a bit more about him. So Mr. Russell, Chris Russell, who does Chris Story, he obliged us with uh, some nice stories about Mr. Murring. What else do we talk about? There's a whole thing. Oh, there's a study being done on um, stereotype threat, which is a sort of academic term for when um, members of a, a marginalised population behave differently because they know they're marginalised. And whether it's possible to uh, extrapolate this to female chess players. And there's been a couple of studies done on it, and it's very interesting. So we talk a little bit about that as well. But yeah, we are uh, episode 18 is available on all good and bad podcast aggregators. What's going on here? Um, this seems okay. My my position is a bit cramped, but I've got <laughs> no weaknesses. And I guess e5 makes sense here, just to try to gain some more of the centre. If they don't take on Passon, then they have, so that's moot. But here, Bishop takes and I can take with the Queen because my Knight on e8 is defending the pawn. And so I've opened up the Rook. I've got two nice central pawns. This seems okay, right? Let's hide our King on a dark square so that that Bishop can't go anywhere near it. And then I suppose we should set about trying to play either e5 or d5. I would 
assume d5 is the way to go, given that would make a passed pawn, though maybe... No, I think this is... I think we're still trying to look to get play d5 here. Against our titled opponent. And if someone's rated 2152 at bullet, then they are presumably far better than a, a WCM, which is... I think a title you get for being 2000, Fido? Yeah, maybe. Alright, so we've got this past depot, and we've got a nice little knight that might be able to start jumping in and out of these holes in the white pawn structure. Keep throwing that up the board. And then get our knight into a square where it can start supporting it. Maybe, anyway. Keep queuing up these challenges. I would like some someone else I'd like to play you guys soon. Alright, so I guess I've got time to double rooks here, have I? Well, maybe not. Maybe I'll just... This is my burden to bear here, where I can instead just drag my king over, maybe, because all my pawns and dark squares over there look good, and maybe I can do something with my rook, don't know. Okay, so we swap the rooks off. White's pawns are. We've got three isolated pawns. Oh, we don't swap the rooks off. Oh, okay. I missed that that wasn't forced. Um, that takes b6. I don't know why white didn't just take the pawn there. I completely missed all of that. I suppose this is dropping now, is it? Ah, uh, this is a knight. Okay. Right, we need to make our rook active again. Not got much choice here. That's annoying. Not long left in this game, so I do need another challenge. Please get involved. Well, this is just an open goal, isn't it? To really activate my rook. I say really, I mean really activate my rook. Feels like there's something nasty here. Rook h2 and then knight f2. Oh, that's careless. So bad. This isn't going well, actually. Nah, this isn't going to be enough, is it? Dear, oh dear. White's got plenty of time with the one second increment, I would imagine, to keep everything going. Give away everything, are we? I don't like these. This is why increments. The increments take away the majesty. They detract from the majesty of Blitz, Blitz Chess. Chip the hand in there. Okay. Come on, I need challenges. This is the whole point of a challenge stream. Is that we have challenges. This makes me look bad. Makes me look like I have. I suppose we'll just do a rematch, shall we? Or not. 
I'll give it 20 seconds and then we'll do some more bullet because everyone's gone missing. Go on, if you're watching, doesn't matter how good or bad you are, just give me a challenge, it's the entire point. Anyway, uh, what's been going on today? I have, yeah, we've released the podcast, but I'm on a lovely little walk around where I used to live. Just trying to get out as much as you can, that's kind of the point. All right, let's play some more two-minute chess because no one is here. No one wants to challenge me. Okay. Oh, it's these cowardly systems. Playing one d6 and two c6 is the uh, it's the instrument of the cowards. Not what anyone wants to see. We're gonna try to play on the opposite side of the board. Hello, Passport 9999. Why don't you give me a challenge so that uh, after this game we can have a little go? I am doing absolutely fine, thank you. I hope you are well as well. So, I'm just going to chuck everything up here while I... Oh, okay. Uh, is this playable? I think Night Takes... Yeah, Night Takes looks playable, but I wasn't sure about Pawn Takes. Really? Maybe it is. Alright, I have to do things a bit differently. Try and take on H6, I suppose. Right, let's just go for the broke here. We've got enough potential backup via uh, a rook swinging across or just a pawn. Got time, I think, to mobilise something else coming over. G5, G6. Unless you can swap off the queens immediately, which would be annoying. Maybe not. Or he can instead just mate me. That's also quite a good move, isn't it? I don't think there's any way to escape either. Well, this was a disaster. Okay, so we've got to swap queens. Uh, I can't even take on d5 yet, because bishop takes two check. I suppose we've got some chances here, two pawns for a piece, but it's looking pretty grim. Uh, f4. Let's just keep trying to throw these pawns up the board, embarrass that king. Or instead, my rook gets. Mm, that's a weird rook trap. Got nowhere else to go. Wow. Okay, so I need to liquidate everything on the king's queen side here, but that's just very unlikely, isn't it? Ah, well, that'll do it. Okay. Right. Come on. More challenges, please. No one. Really? Where's the, where's all my, uh, there we go, right, lovely. Okay, we have some, we have some people. Ah, no, that's my bad, I've just, uh, there we go. Right. So, let's do this against our friend here, DMR1848. Whomever that is. So we have a two bish, a two knights uh, carry card. 
which is uh, gaining in popularity, absolutely. These lines are not easy for black anymore. White has got lots of weapons, particularly in the G4 lines. But this stuff I played on Tuesday night against Mr. Russell, who is my one of my co-conspirators on the chess pit. And yeah, it's, uh, it's not so easy to see how white a black ever makes progress because it's tough to play C5. But if I am allowed to get my pieces out with tempo as here, it's not quite as good for white because yeah, white's just unnecessarily giving me a tempo to play bishop d6 there. Anyway, let's talk a bit about this record. So, Dilate by Vessels came out in 2015, and I heard it for the first time at a at the time I wrote for a a music website called Echoes and Dust. And we'd had our Christmas party in Hackney, which is, as you can imagine, a fairly raucous affair. Ended up with us um, listening to this at about probably 5am. And it, yeah, it made sense as a record to listen to at 5am. Hopefully it's making sense as a record to listen to at 10pm. But yeah, it's... Uh, it's been one of my favourites ever since. Right, White's doing the right thing here. He's got to go for it. Otherwise, uh, there's too much at stake on the um, C file. So White has to really load the gun and chuck everything at my king here. And they are doing that very well. I think it's worth a pawn to get rid of that light squared bishop. It's a very good piece. Or maybe I can just play knight age. No, let's do this. And then queen takes, and we can. Oh no, okay. Well, now I think this is trouble, isn't it? Because I get the f4 pawn. And the king and the queen being on the same diagonal starts to look like an issue. And now it's the queen, the rook, and the king on the same diagonal. And this isn't especially pleasant. But having said that, white has uh, that lovely bishop on d3. And this is not going to be easy by any stretch of the imagination. What do I have? I have a pawn and the exchange. But as I said, that bishop on d3, very good. Very good piece. So what I really need to do here is try to get the queens off as quickly as possible. Otherwise I might start to struggle. So let's limit that rook a little bit. And yeah, my main task here is to swap the queens off so that there's no chance of losing. And then hopefully the extra pawn in addition to the rook against the bishop should tell. But this is not going to be simple. What you want to do when you've got the exchange up, when you've got a rook for a bishop, you want to make your extra rook better than their extra bishop. So that is the motivation of this move, to basically force on Passant here, I think. Because otherwise, if he doesn't take on Passant, then the bishop is just absolute garbage. All my pawns being on light squares means they're completely blocked in. With the... Um... Yeah, so I think now I can just stodge everything up. And my f-pawn is just a going to roll and that bishop on d3 is certainly not better than my my rook I think white had to take on pass on there let my rook come to f6 but then continue to have this very very nice bishop but now everything is um, completely fixed and it's I don't think going to be very easy for white to make any progress here please queue up the next challenge Otherwise, if not, I will happily play a rematch against our friend here. Uh, well, there's nothing under threat here, so I can still play f4. Let's just roll this pawn forwards. 
queen takes b7, runs into queen e1 mate, unfortunately. Um, fair enough. Okay, so this is actually slightly tricky, isn't it? Right, that was careless. I think, though. Oh, I think I can just about get away with rookie seven here. I don't deserve to be able to play this move. But again, queen takes rook and then I can play queen takes rook with mate. Ah, good. Got another challenge queued up. That's lovely stuff. Let me try and keep it going because we've got another... About another half an hour after this. Okay, queen g5 and everything is now protected. And I can probably have time to play a5, a6 and b5 to arrest that bishop further. Put all my pawns on light squares so that they're controlling light squares that the white bishop wants to be able to go to. And now we win a piece with this discovered check. And that should be that. But white, uh, white definitely has some chances there. If, um, if they hadn't uh, done the same thing again, haven't they? Right, let's play this game. Uh, what should I play? Something different? Or what should we. No, let's go for our normal. Our normal stuff against the English. Now let's play something different. Let's play this some C6 stuff. I called C6 lines earlier on the instrument of the cowards. But I think these, basically now this is a Slav. Um, this is a bit more rare. Uh, but I will, what I will do here is I will play A8. Well, I was going to play A6, <laughs> which is definitely the, the instrument of the cowards. That's the move that Korchnoi played um, called anti-chess. But instead I've uh, mouse slipped with A5, which is complete nonsense. But we'll try to make it work for us. I hope everyone's doing okay. Please uh, talk to me in the chat on Twitch. Let me know what you've uh, been up to today. Let me know where you are, what your uh, current lockdown situation is. Well, Charlie's played a4, so I think I've got I've got to um, get a bishop to to b4 now that that square is just a complete outpost. Alrighty. Yeah, let's get a bishop to b4. So we've got outpost central here. You do get some interesting games when you mouse slip. I had one the other night on Tuesday where I, uh, on the stream, Blitz Album Party number 7, I accidentally on purpose, very much accidentally, just gave away a piece on move 6. And uh, it does of course change the way you play. So yeah the, the bit the battle here is to make my make my bishop on b4 a decent piece. And I've got other things I suppose I can I mean ideally I want to get a knight to b4 but that seems very far fetched. So for now we will just play a bit quietly. When you have outposts it does mean that the files either side of them become very important because you need to be able to support it. So taking control of the C file would be lovely. That may not happen but I think if rook fc1 we just play rook c6 and then do our best to double those rooks and if we don't then we can take the b file instead because rook takes rook i'll take the back of the pawn of course kick that knight off that's uh, outpost on b5 so th this is why the files become very important because you need these kind of hooks ways to uh, help support the pieces you've got ingrained and trenched on these outposts Okay, so I suppose we'll get rid of the bishop 
leaves that night looking lovely on E4. Now I could take control of the B file here. I suppose that's the best way to play. Let's just make it happen. So everything comes off while I get the, the only open file on the board. That can't be that can't be bad, can it? Can't be bad at all. Did I accidentally just skip a track? Now we've gone back to the beginning of this one. There we go. We're back with the game. Okay, so two minutes left. Got a bit of time here. I suppose we should attack pawns if they are looking a bit loose. Rook C7, Knight. Rook c7, I might have to play queen d6. No, I can take the pawn up, obviously. Rook c7 and queen takes a pawn will defend the knight. So that can't. That must be right. Really? I think this is okay. So now I've pawned up, I want to hoover off everything. And while that knight is on. I was going to say, while that knight's on d7. That knight can't come into e5, but maybe I do have to play it. Knight f6 here. Which would be annoying. Okay, so, and then knight e5 is coming, I guess. I mean, that's why I would assume. And then rook f8, rook f7. Yeah, I'm starting to lose the thread of it a bit. So rook f7, queen d1 check. I've got perpetual if I want it. Or maybe I don't actually. Queen f1. Let's try and go after that f2 pawn instead. Oh, I get it already. Get even anyway. Okay, now all these pawns are starting to fall off. Friend Charlie here is uh, not having the most fun he's ever had before. I'm sure. This looks very, very dodgy. I grab the d4 pawn as well? I think I can. Knight c6 is the only move that saves both pieces. And then what do we do? Queen e3. Not sure how many times there have been four pawns up in the game. It's quite a lot. This isn't over though. My king is slightly airy. It's very airy, actually. I would quite like to swap the queens off, but I'm not sure how I can do that. Can't see a way. Can't see a way. Yeah, so this the idea here is just to um, clear some space so I can play rook c8 and start threatening the back rank instead. After which we've got knight h3 check and then knight f4. I probably can pre-move that. Then we're really starting to surround the king. White has not got much time left either. I suppose we'll just swap, swap queens and then... We've got three extra pawns. Should be enough. Need hope. Four extra pawns. And I imagine Charlie will resign here. Right. 
there's no other challenger, we will have a little rematch. Okay, let's have another one. Let's try something different. 1v3, why not? Please queue up the challenges for next few games. Let's play some nonsense. And this really is nonsense. Uh, we, if you can get E4 in as well, that would be amazing. That would be completely symmetrical. Yeah, why not? Let's do it. Okay. So, I guess we get H3 and we'll keep it symmetrical. And then I need to decide which pawn to move forward. D, D pawn or the E pawn. Guess the D pawn, because it's putting some pressure on the... Uh, B5 pawn now, indirectly. If B4, then I've got a nice little outpost on A4 for my knight. Yeah, let's take this one. And then sacrifice that pawn on E4 for all the play in the world. So we've got a knight onto D, onto B5. We're trying to get the other one into C4. Got two decent bishops. I think this is worth a pawn. Maybe not, but I'm sure we'll find out sooner or later. Where's that queen going? D8? Yeah, okay. I can attack that loose pawn on A5 as well. This is going okay. I think this is probably worth the risk. Just about. Um, I'm not sure what my knight is. Maybe we just take on... Yeah, let's just take on a5. I think this is, looks alright. If the if the e pawn, black e pawn, is going to do anything, ideally, I think they need their queen to put, mop up the pieces, perhaps. But this seems okay. Welcome to new viewers. You are watching the Chesspit Podcast Blitz Album Party to celebrate the launch of episode 18 that came out this evening. We've got Dilate by Vessels as our record to play alongside the stream tonight. But please do challenge me at 3 plus 2, 3 plus 0, or 5 plus 0 on Leeches, where I, my name is Dave Ann Cowboy, as you can see. So, what we got? We've got material is equal, but I've got an enormous queen side and very mobile pieces and a fairly advanced pawn on A4 already. Alrighty. It's another little out, sort of pseudo outpost on E5 to take. I think we can probably just start shoving this pawn up the board. We've got loads and loads of time on the clock to think about it, but hopefully we won't need it. Not am I that bothered about the pawn on G3? I mean, I could go really hyper-positional here and take that knight on E4. Should we do it? Let's do it. Why not? And then pawn takes C, followed by. Well, do I want to play knight C4 or E4? Probably knight C4. 
because it stops e3 and it also blocks the c pawn and it just brings that knight into play so it can come into b6 fairly soon to start looking at the queening square i'm not sure this is much fun for black i might be wrong maybe there's ways of doing things that i've missed but this pawn looks very very fast especially while that knight is all the way over on uh what is quite an unhelpful square h5 I think if I get my king to e3, that might be close to over. Just not sure how this black knight is ever going to help. I might be wrong. It's happened before. Please, again, we're lacking a challenge for the next game. So please do... Uh, Give me a go. Not got long left. I've got about 15 minutes, I think, maybe slightly less on the album. So the reason I play King F3 there is to take away any of those uh, night checks. Maybe we could even. Is this. Let's try to take away some more, more squares. And hide my king on b2, maybe. b2 is a good square. Just gets out of the way of everything. My main idea here is rook b7 followed by knight b6 in some some way or shape or form. Maybe we can What do we want to do? Yeah, let's play this knight round. And then c4 should chase that knight away. Followed by knight c7. Oh, we do have to be a bit careful, don't we? Alright. Still, black still got some hopes with this e pawn. I might have, probably should have taken and paid a bit more heed to it. Uh, here? I'm going to promote. It's just whether I get uh, any issues with this. So I promote with check. That's quite important. Um, hmm. I'm going to assume that Black's king is far too airy here to survive this. This might have been a very bold assumption, actually. Um, hmm. There aren't many checks. Queen a1 here, and then black's run out of checks already. And I'm threatening, well, all sorts, but... Is this good enough? Yeah, it's good enough. But that was a bit close. Okay, I'll give it 20 seconds and hopefully someone else would challenge me. Otherwise, I think we might have to play some uh, something else. Hope you've enjoyed the uh, record so far. I'm not sure what we're going to do next week. We'll do this every Tuesday and Thursday, so episodes 9 and 10 are next week. Not sure. Not sure which records we'll do. I haven't decided yet. Maybe you guys can suggest some in the chat.
Give it another 10 seconds and then I'm going to play some bullet. You guys are being very uh, coy with your challenges tonight. We haven't had many. Well, that's okay. No? Okay. Play a little bit of bullet and then hopefully one of you will uh, decide to be a bit braver and give it a go. Right, so Karakon, let's fantasy variation. Let's play the Car what Carlson plays, which is um, it's not necessarily a line that I understand that well, but give it a go. So I think the idea here is just to stop the bishop on c1 developing, unless I've misunderstood something. But I don't see why white can't play bishop e3, because it's just going to end up like a poison pawn position. I, I don't know, I've, I've not played this before, I'm not sure, uh, not sure what the main ideas are. Seems like white just gets very decent development. Right, we we're on to our last, our last track. Uh, yeah, I suppose we'll get rid of the, those and then play knight e5. So we've got a knight on a nice outpost. Yeah, we were pulling down, but we've got two decent. I've got a decent outpost there, and can probably get another one fairly soon. I hope. Um, okay, this isn't going well at all actually, is it? So h3, I need to take the knight on f3. Either way, I'm going to keep a knight on e5, which is the main thing. f4, knight g6. Oh, giving themselves some weaknesses. Oh, my bishop just drops. Ah, this is completely garbage. Okay, I'm going to call it a night because everyone seems to have disappeared, which is absolutely their right. But uh, yeah, episode 18 out now, and we'll be back with another of these on Tuesday. So hopefully see you then.